This fan base is amazing. The city of Cincinnati is amazing, and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Desmond takes a handoff run to the right. He's got all sorts of room to the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! get a cough out the way <laughs> good hey there folks this is justin hiles of the vibla cats podcast and welcome back if you're a familiar listener if you're not you might be a xavier fan if you're not any of those we're happy to have you here anyways this is the third annual crosstown crossover that's right it's crosstown shootout week and that means that we are bringing in the roll blob pod these are our favorite guys to collaborate with all season long it's just absolutely idiocy, but we also have some really fun conversations, some good takes, and some good digs as well. We're super excited for this year's episode, so keep in tune for that. But before we get to all that, I want to also mention that there is a very special guest this year who happens to be a new addition to the Roblox Pod lineup, and that is Kenny Freeze. That's a name that you might recognize if you've been familiar with the shootout for more than about 10 years. Uh, so keep in tune for that. We're super excited. And uh, it really just rounds out this whole thing because a lot of us who, you know, like to talk basketball, it's different to have the player perspective, especially for somebody who's played in a couple of these games. So very excited for that. I would also like to mention that we are part of the 1012 network. And if you would like to find the 1012 network, the Big 12's premier podcasting group, you can find them at the 1012 network online. You can find them on Twitter. You can find them on Instagram, everywhere. And that'll give you access to all of our shows between all of the different schools that are covered there. And there's plenty to go for there. So check that out. And don't forget that our sponsor is Charlie Hustle. Of course, a name very familiar with Cincinnatians as well. But head to www.charliehustle.com and you can find so much gear, so much gear. There's so many different options, and we're really excited to be still continuing to collaborate with them throughout the season. They've got you covered all winter long. I know Christmas is coming up. There's probably lots of shopping that people are trying to do. If you've got somebody who's a Big 12 fan of any one of the schools, if you got somebody who's a fan of a couple different Southern schools, they've got you covered there. I believe they're over 35 schools now, 34, 35. So they got plenty to choose from there. There's so many options. They've got some great quality threads with some awesome graphics. So make sure to check out www.charliehustle.com where you can find our promo code, the 101215. That's 101215 promo code to get 15% off of all non-sell items. That's good through the season, so make sure to use it. We'd be happy to help you out there as well. And again, guys, uh, this is going to be a really interesting one. <laughs> I'm really excited for this week. So without further ado, the 2023 Crosstown Collaboration. We got Justin and Steve from the Viva La Cats podcast. Boys, is there anything coming up here soon? Like, I don't know, maybe. Yeah. Why the fuck are you here? <laughs> I, I don't know, honestly. I, I'd like, I thought we were just talking about the Houston game last night since we're part of the Big 12 now, you know, like we, we got, yeah. we got to like support our, our teams, you know, but I think there is something coming up next week. The manager, the manager games, boys, the manager <laughs> games are coming who, back. So who you got, who you got on that? We, we're starting the uh, Blob King sports book. Who do you, who do you have your money on the manager's game? So I haven't really gotten a chance to watch the UC managers play, but uh you know, fake fan uh, by by a cool uh, cats by a cool ninety. How about that? Uh, you know, uh, a little ninety burger on those Xavier boys. I'm taking the under. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I take the under. Well, well, the unders okay. are what like three <laughs> ten. <laughs> yeah, there's no defense being played in those yeah. games. Dude. No, none at all. They are none just needed. like just coming down and chucking. Like even more than uh, last year's UC team would. <laughs> Uh, throw, so we're expecting a rock fight is what i'm hearing yes yes, yes. exactly yeah i mean what y'all score last night like 52 
Like, I mean, oh, come on, come on, 60. You got 60. Uh, 60. You we played a Houston. 60 burger. Come on, like, we okay. know, that's we know like nothing 80 less. in any other game. So, we'll get all it right. To you. All right, fair enough. I mean, and then like you only had one dude making threes, and then the rest of them, uh, uh not so close there, but you know, it's all right. Hey, man, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but Xavier plants 10 trees for every three point shot made, so they still <laughs> planted 30 trees yesterday. Okay. But- and I think they've kind of talked to the Xavier players a little bit. It's like, hey, we don't have the staff to plant these trees. There's still shortages, especially manual labor. No one wants to do it. That's the problem <laughs> with uh, America right now. Yep. But I think they're kind of coordinating that. And then for every missed three, I cut down a tree. <laughs> so I have an axe. Uh, if you have noticed, like my biceps are getting bigger. By Damn. The- Damn. It's just the right one, though. For no other reason. <laughs> <laughs> no other reason. Yeah, I'm right So. Hand. Coop, what you're saying is trees are dying at an alarming rate in the Cincinnati area right now. Because <laughs> he's the cutting them down for tissue boxes. <laughs> oh, come on. Okay. Uh, uh, it's, if you if you live in the Milford area, like if I don't know if you guys know much about Milford, but it's a, it's just north of Cincinnati. I know you, you big time Arizona people now, uh, <laughs> but Milford is just above Cincinnati. If you live in that area, you're gonna have a big oxygen shortage. Yep. <laughs> And Coop's running out of trees in Love um, Milford. He's going to have to go to Loveland, going to have to go to Madeira, like everywhere on the east side. And then oh, he's yeah. just going to have to come over to the west side by the end of the year. So, Yeah, we'll, we'll get there when we get there. But, hey, you mentioned that you're in the Big 12 now. This is the first time ever that both teams are in power conferences playing each other. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That is pretty crazy. And y'all just, like, decided to steal our name last time uh so hopefully y'all don't just take the big 12 out from under us somehow again once we get 12 teams in the conference we're coming for it uh so you you guys are like one short right we have 11 then we're then we're is is uconn still leaving to come over to us and then complain about why they aren't in the big east anymore (laughs) yeah that's that's still a movement but i think that died down after they saw their football season yeah exactly dude (laughs) That was the worst part about conference realignment this summer was like all the other Big 12 fans talking up UConn. And UConn is great. Like, I'm not saying they're like bad. They lost to Kansas last night. They really can't be that great. (laughs) Well, maybe not this year. But, dude, that was like the worst part about being a UC fan is having to see all the UConn fans like just bitch about winning, not winning anything in the American, even though they had won that title in 14. And then as soon as they get back to the Big East, they win a title. And I just knew that if they accepted the Big 12 invite or if they, came to the big 12 that they would just do the same thing again and it would just be the most annoying timeline they're never happy no god no no they're the yankees they they are the yankees well most of them are yankees fans yeah yeah exactly <laughs> they're, they're, yeah. they're yankees so. fans celtics fans yukon <laughs> fans and the probably alabama football fans yeah exactly just about yeah. the worst combination you can get sounds like you andy <laughs> <laughs> no that's randy yeah. That's Randy. Oh, excuse me. Yes, We're talking Randy. to Randy. Yeah. And I don't know how I can have the worst combination. Like I've I've literally never seen anything good. <laughs> <laughs> no, me neither. No, we, that that's something we can all agree on is that uh, we are uh, recording today in memoriam of uh, Joe Burrow. May he rest in peace. Uh, may his old wrist be resurrected for next year. So I think we can all agree on that at least. Uh, hopefully, on the third day, it rises again. <laughs> that man is starting to turn into a game of operation at this point. Like it's, I'm scared. I'm scared for his future, but FC he'll be back. Cincinnati is um in I don't know, is it Eastern Conference? Is that how they do that? I don't. Yeah, know. yeah. Columbus follow- sucks. Yeah, I hate hell, Columbus. Hell. There you yes. go. Yeah, see, I like when we come together. But you're right. So awesome. Coop, bringing it back together. We yeah, are both in power conference. <laughs> We are back in power conferences. We are together in a power conference for the first time. Uh, is it weird now to have another team in your city, in your area, that is on almost on the same level as y'all now? Just because, like, you know, we were recruiting at different levels for a while there. But now, I mean, it's kind of getting similar, you know. And once you got two teams, like, I think now the rivalry has a chance to get even better just because you've got teams competing for the same level of prospect in like within a three mile radius of each other. I think it has a chance to get even more heated. Not even the same level. Sometimes the same prospects too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we've been, there have been a couple that we've been in on like that, um, that eliminated from the, and put you guys in their final four or whatever. Um, so it's actually getting really fucking exciting. The 
past the past what decade we weren't even re- recruiting the same type of players we had completely different brands but now like Wes and Sean kind of have the the same they, they both like balance they both like <laughs> athleticism they both like shooting it's completely different and now it's almost that, like they like see... getting basketball players. <laughs> right. makes sense <laughs> <laughs> and the and the fact that um now that we're both in power conference we're both going for those top 100 guys and i i i'm not going to lie it's weird it is really fucking weird <laughs> <laughs> well i think what the big thing is you look at the Xavier running man jerseys. They look excellent. I've been saying if they wore those against Houston, they win. Actually, if they wore any other uniform other than their alternate grades, they win yesterday, 100%. <laughs> and UC has those uniforms now, like the red ones that say Cincy with the Y. Like, those are crisp. So I think those two uniforms alone, it's like, okay, if you're putting out, like, a graphic you know, like officially offered, whatever has to be one of those two uniforms. Oh yeah. So I think that's going to help immensely. Completely agree. This has been one of my takes for a while is that both teams should wear like their throwback uniforms. Like not saying I like before this year, ours were kind of trash. And then like, I, I do have respect for the running man. Like those have been legit and you have both the home and away version of the throwback. So I don't understand why we don't just wear those for each of those. So yeah. Like we had the cat. This one would have been good last year. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree. And I don't know. Missed opportunity. I'd say. I think one of the things too, like it kind of taps into the just history of the rivalry in general, if you go and throw it back. So, I mean, I feel like it just kind of makes sense. Oh God. Oh boy. <laughs> no, there is no way. <laughs> Oh wow! Oh my God! Oh wow! What just happened? Yeah, like, is something <laughs> different. Did the what glasses happen to Cap? And Cap, Cap finally learned how to grow facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, welcome to the party. Kenny Freeze just joined us. Oh wow! What's up, Kenny? Hopefully, How's it going, man? Hopefully, you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you, man. Yeah, I'm perfect. Yeah, you sound great. Some, what a surprise! Technical issues lately. This is an awesome surprise. You guys look a lot more nervous. You see, yeah, like, <laughs> and Andy. Yeah. You, you sweat, know, for the people watching at home, they're sweating right now. <laughs> well, that's a that's just a medical problem I have, Andy. So I, I, we don't we just don't need to talk about that. But uh, dude, like when the glass breaks and the wild thing comes running on you, like that was a legitimately shocking. Like that's the most shocked I've ever been recording a podcast. So <laughs> kudos to you guys. Oh man, I'm just happy Kenny was able to be patient and um and sit in the waiting room for that long. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Like I took everything in my power. I almost made a new Zoom call. (laughs) (laughs) I mean this in the like the absolute most respectful way possible, but with Uh, with you guys, like I just think it's so funny because I've noticed that Kenny's been on a couple of your like podcasts. I don't know how consistent this has been going on recently, but like. I don't know. Like just the dynamic here. It's like everybody else is like, let's bring in the old players. Let's do this. And then it's just like the dumbassery that you guys have. (laughs) I think it's just an amazing mold to bring in Kenny freeze as well. It's just a completely different dynamic now. Yeah. It's been fun. We're, we're, we're doing every, we're doing everything. I'm I'm part of the role blob boys now. That's amazing. (laughs) Like I, I actually love that. It's because this is like, the energy that I'm looking for here. This just yeah. like adds to the dynamic. It makes it even better. Well, there you go. <laughs> I, I gotta be honest with you. I wasn't I wasn't too happy about about getting on with the UC boys, but they, they assured <laughs> me you guys were cool. So I said, okay. Yeah, I, I promise we're we're well, I don't I don't I don't want to call myself cool because I'm definitely not cool, but uh I'm uh I'm not a random UC troll on Twitter that that you might see. So well, I've dealt with a lot of them. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, we... you know, I had a guy. I had a guy when I was in school. A kid from UC used to call me for like about eighteen months straight. He called me at three o'clock in the morning every single night, and left me a voicemail talking about how he wanted to fight me in a ring of fire. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not joking. I probably had at least a thousand voicemails from him. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! How do you get your number? Uh, well, I mean, who knows? Could have been a. I, I've never. I, my numbers never changed, so it's just like I've had college the same students are insane like, like that. Years old, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm. I'm. I can probably guess how he got my phone number, but we won't go into that. 
Fellas. <laughs> <laughs> well, now yeah, we're, oh. we're six deep. Yeah. <laughs> hey, like that that's where I thrive. <laughs> hey, Cap, I see you're wearing the, the running man jersey. What uniform should Xavier break out for the shootout? Uh, God help me if it's gray. If it's gray, we're obviously going to lose by 30. Um, Trey scored 40 in the grays, and we still lost. Right. Yeah. Can't go yeah. gray. Anything but gray. So we, win I, in anything but, we win in anything but gray. What I really want to see, I was just telling the Viva La Cats boys, um, blue running mans, I think, would look clean. And then if you see what's wearing those new red jerseys they have that say Cincy across the chest Ooh. with the Y. What, I, or what about the script cats? Like running man, blue running man versus the the script well, cats. Well, see the this one, this one's great, but Under Armour can't. Uh, the, the Harrison Wildcats paid us a nice hefty sum to uh, take those uniforms off our hands and make them green. So, yeah. did you guys see that? By the way, like that Harrison is legit wearing the cats uniforms. Uh, it's like the season. exact same thing. <laughs> Well, didn't you guys have some thing with uniforms? Like you guys were using like uh, nice sports or like reversible yeah. uniforms. Or whoa, 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 Cap, can I see your shoulder real quick? That's a little weird. Are you on? <laughs> are you unironically wearing a no sleeve jersey just around yeah. the house? Yeah. Oh, he's, I'm, right. not, I'm not gonna lie to you. I woke up seven minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's about like be, five please. minutes past the start. Yeah, that, that's how yeah. professional yeah. we are. Always on I was time. Say, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you beat me by about four minutes. If Kenny and I streamed last night, and I'm not gonna lie to you, like I was exhausted and I like totally forgot we had anything in the morning. Girlfriend came over. Had sexy time, and then uh, yeah, here we are. Congrats, hey, yeah. congrats. Yeah, yeah. That's first time the dump truck room was all messed up when I went home. Yeah, yeah. For, I was I was a fan for a long time. But it was my first time experiencing it, so it was, it was pretty cool. I mean, would recommend. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Thank you. I appreciate. Yeah. I, I will p- keep that in the notes for sure. I could finally relate to the song. I just had sex, which was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are officially a four man team now. Correct. That's yep. great. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, hey, let's take a second while we're all here to kind of plug what we've been doing. I know everyone listening on the Viva La Cat side is really into this, so I want to plug it. So for every Xavier away game and for some select home games, neutral site games, we'll definitely do some tournament games, uh, God willing. We are streaming the games. So in some way, at least two of the four of us are going to be <clears throat> watching the game and uh, streaming it live on YouTube. So we have like prop bets, we have giveaways, analysis. It's a lot better than listening to, you know, play by play. Fucking Donnie Marshall. God, that yeah. guy pissed me off last night. You're yeah, I'm sorry, any... but that was bad. That, he was bad last night. I'm not going to hear any egg Xavier, nothing like that. So, <laughs> any, or someone any... call, literally calls the Xavier Mustangs. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than the Bears. It's better than the Bears. But hey, at least we're ranked. Number 22 Bears will take it. Yeah, what was up with that? What what the hell was that? Dude, broadcast? honestly, like top top three, like worst all time broadcast that the Bearcats were a part of. Just but be glad y'all don't have to pay for ESPN Plus because uh, that was what you pay for. Uh, you you get yeah. student run broadcasts and uh, yeah, you get that. So uh, hey, at least they ranked us, but they called us the Bears. So you know, kind of a <laughs> a, a little a little bit of wrong on both. So the lowercase Bears at that. You know, like, I who thought. The hell did you- Who'd you suck off to get a 22 next year, Dave? What the hell was that? <laughs> I don't know. Howard's just reading the right the right AP poll, and for that we thank them. But yeah, um, Howard. <laughs> so, uh, but I thought honestly, like leaving the American and joining the Big 12, we were kind of going to get away from those like like not to say like small time broadcasts like that or like playing in a gym of like 4,000 people. But our coach was like, "No, we love that. Like, let's let's do some more of it. Let, let's keep it going." <laughs> He's a UNC Greensville guy, you know. He's got to, he got to jump in there a little bit. Greensboro. <laughs> exactly. it, it took, it took yeah. him like a month to be like, you know what? I miss Tulsa. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Tulane I mean, with like four thousand people there, like maybe even half of that. They really know how to do basketball, right? They had it rocking. I mean, ha- honestly, I'm curious, Kenny. Like, what was it like? I'm. Did you ever like play in just the tiniest arenas like that? What was that kind of environment like? Because from a Fan perspective, I think a lot of us watch that, and it's just kind of, you know, it seems very easy to play in it, but I'm sure it's probably much more difficult than it appears. I mean, to be honest, we never really had – when we were playing in the A-10, we never really had that 
that kind of environment. I mean, we would play in smaller gyms like St. Bonaventure and stuff like that. But when, when we were there, it was like, I mean, the place was always packed. They were, they, I mean, it was always rowdy. We never had any type of, any type of games where it was low key. Like it was always, there was always right. people in the stands and it was always student sections there an hour and a half before the games chirping us during warm ups and like, so I never really felt that other than like when we would go play in like the Virgin Islands or Puerto Rico, Hawaii, like it wasn't, and even then we still had Xavier fans traveled pretty well when I was there. So we would still have a few hundred, at least Xavier fans that were cheering for us during the games. But I'm trying to think if I've really had that experience. I mean, yes. maybe, maybe even the worst, like the worst for that was my senior year when we played in the sweet 16 at the Georgia dome, like they had, they had like probably, I don't know, over half of the state, over half of that stadium blocked off. Mm. So we only had fans on one side, which was weird. Um, but that would be the only time that I can really, and that's probably just because that was my last game ever that I remember that part yeah. of it, but it's, you know, I don't know. I don't, but I, I imagine it would be pretty difficult to play, especially in an away setting. If there's nobody there. Are the Cats boys trying to say they forget what it was like to play against Tulsa with 12 people in that gym? Don't tell me you forgot about the American already. No, no, no. no, no. no. I'm, I'm saying from a player oh, perspective. A player. Yeah. Clearly, I'm I saying... have not played basketball since like the age of like 12. <laughs> Once everybody else started dunking, that's when I got the fuck out of there. <laughs> oh, dude, dude, it was literally the same moment for me, dude. There's an alley oh, within like the first like couple minutes of a seventh grade game. And I was like, yeah, this ain't for me. No. <laughs> like this is, this is fun, but I, there's no future here. We were talking about one of the podcasts we were talking about uh shane gillis and he had a joke about that and he was just he was like i saw the first guy dunk and i was like well there goes that dream yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like i'm just gonna run down really hard for the next four years yeah. <laughs> let's grab this microphone real quick see how this goes yeah <laughs> get me off the court that's how you end up being any one of the five that are not kidding <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hey, you, career. i mean that that's a good question though about about this the stance because we were i've been a little bit disappointed with the with the turnout for some of these xavier games like i that's such a foreign thing to me for xavier at home to not have a sold out crowd so it's uh it's been interesting to look in the stands and see behind the benches you know probably 25 30 percent of the seats aren't aren't filled and that was that was odd to me. And I mean, obviously for the Houston game, it's packed and that stuff, but we never had, it didn't matter who we were playing. It, we IPFW, I sold out crowd. Like we weren't, it wasn't ever a problem for us to get people in the stands. And I'm noticing that more and more with some of these Xavier games, that Xavier's not pulling in the people like they used to. Well, that's, that's something I've like that. kind of noticed and been really disappointed with, where it's like, it feels like a lot of our fan base, like the, the older, um, generation in our fan base we call them the lower bowl crowd they think we're a little above where we are like they hold us to a higher standard than we really are like they think we're some of them legitimately think like we're a prime program when in reality like we're still built we're still a program that's kind of building itself so they think that they don't like they're like i, I don't want to go see robert morris play i don't i don't want to go watch vermont like we'll, we'll we'll just we'll just kill them i don't want to go watch oakland we're going to win yeah. that game easily yeah. <laughs> we were talking about this last night the entitlement during the steel era was freaking nuts oh, dude. that's that's the proper word is entitlement and it was so bad like it, it's been getting absurd like i i, I want to go to every saver game fucking possible yeah, we've been uh, having a problem with that with our students, at least. Like, at least shout out to y'all students. Like, they seem to show up for every game because, I mean, there's not much else going on on that campus. Sorry, I had to get one in. I had to get one. <laughs> get more. Um, get more. We've been dunking on you guys for two years. Like, <laughs> I mean, but it should be five. Put some respect on the medical school. Respect yeah. on the doctors. <laughs> but, uh, dude, like – our students are not showing up because they're all going, they've been all going to the football games recently, but How's that I mean, going? Now, yeah, exactly. So, you know, half empty, Justin and I were there for the last football game, half empty crowd for that uh, student, student crowd for that one. So I'm hoping that like, it really feels like the first time in a while that UC's had a little bit more momentum than X has going into this game. And I feel like, man, we've been talking about it and we don't want to say anything yet, but if we beat y'all finally in CentOS for the first time since 2001, that You're would never be... going to hear the fucking end of it. <laughs> no, yeah. No, I know. Year. 
Dude, I know this shit but... has been building up. We've had blue balls for so long. <laughs> it has been so bad, well, like four it, straight years. This is yeah. ridiculous, man. Like there's, I, I did the math on this last year. I don't remember exactly how long I spent looking into it, but it was way too long to find out that this rivalry has not gone more than three games, like straight for either side since like the seventies. And so the fact that it's on four is just nuts because this is supposed to be back and forth. And it is not. It has been okay. way too much in Xavier's favor. Granted, well, last year was really close. There was the like phantom timeout at the end of the game, which really like irked me. But I mean, I don't know. We we came close last year, and I think there's a yeah, legitimate chance whatever. that we have this year. But I have. It's, you guys got I just the think TBT. It's... Yeah. Huh? I said you guys got the TBT. Yeah. Yeah. That you did. That you did. I just. Sorry, no, guys. but I, I think <laughs> we were talking about it last night about how this is the first time in i'm not saying this in a like condescending way but this is the first time in a while that's, that you're right you guys have this momentum over over xavier and i think that everybody can see that and this is on top of it being a big rivalry game which it obviously is xavier has to win this game you know what i mean like it's xavier needs to win for their season <laughs> like if yeah. they lose to you like you know you go and they play delaware next and you know Let's just pray that they can take care of that. But just then we, you go to UC, and or we UC comes to us. But if they can't, if they don't win that game, then you're kind of looking at it like, wow, that's three legit. Well, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna consider Oakland honestly a pretty good team. I think that they're gonna be a tournament team. But that's probably four possible tournament teams that you're losing to at the beginning of the season. I don't know. I don't know if you come back from that unless you just absolutely roll through the Big East, which. I don't think I think I don't think any of us think it's going to happen. So yeah, it's just okay. it's going to be tough. We have to we have to get a couple of good wins before the before conference starts. Hey, and I, I think, think like Xavier and UC are kind of in similar boats now, especially with you guys being in the Big Twelve, where it's kind of a blessing and a curse because it's good in the sense if you drop some non-con games, you can make it up in conference play. Like if Xavier goes and beats Marquette and UConn and uh Creighton whatever then some of those non-conference losses are forgiven but it also can set you up where if you don't do well in the non-conference slate then you've got an absolutely stacked conference schedule and same with you guys in the big 12 so it's kind of it's good and it's bad but I mean yeah look we need this one more than you guys do (laughs) no sorry no never see this is the thing about this game is that like when you're coming off of this, because Steve and I actually talked about this this past week, was what does this game actually mean for like each program? I think for Xavier, of course, now that you guys have been on a little bit of a skid, like you just said, this really determines the course of the rest of your season. And it determines your eligibility for the tournament going forward. Granted, you'd be losing to some pretty good teams throughout that. So you'd a probably still have a shot. Losses there. A ton of quality <laughs> losses. A ton of quality <laughs> losses, yes. But see, those actually matter in basketball. <laughs> the different part is I think when you look at this for Cincinnati, this is Wes Miller. Like I, I I've said this earlier this week that I think that for Wes Miller, like I wouldn't personally be out on him, but I know a lot of people are looking at this. You're in year three. You got to figure it out because it's not just year three. It's year five of this game after Mick Cronin. So like, you've got to figure it out. And with, Puff the magic dragon way in the past. You got to make sure that this game is taken care of because if it's not next year, it's at home. You're expected to win that. If you win it away, you do with it. You do this for the first time, in like 20 years. Like that's, that's a huge swing for Wes and people's belief in him to take this program and farther. When was the last time y'all were like, like four and four, like, you know, you like, and that's respect to y'all because you guys have been like really good for, I don't know. I mean, Xavier fans tell me all the time and on Twitter, like past 30 years, like they've been a much better program than us. So, but seriously though, like when's the last time Xavier was four and four or four and three, like going into like at this point in the season, it's been a while. The last time it's been close was Travis Steele's first year. I was like, I mean, we kind of, we kind of, um, we got off to, we got off to a, Fast start against those low mag- mages, but the first time we played a uh, like an actual team, we kind of shit the bed a little bit. Then obviously put up forty seven entire points at Fifth Third Arena that year. Uh, so that's probably like that's that's the last time it was even close without even looking because the rest of the years we got we started off hot then dwindled at the end. 
Yeah, there could have been one year under Mac. I'm trying to remember. I don't know. We're not used to it. We're not yeah. used to five hundred yeah. stuff. But that's so a new would you guys, would you guys yeah. say that Wes Miller is the Ryan Day of the Xavier Cincinnati <laughs> rivalry? See, Ooh. if uh, Wes Miller had taken over for Bob Huggins in like 2002, maybe, yeah. but uh, <laughs> like I don't think he it's wasn't there taking yet. over an Elite Eight team. That yeah. was a that was a, a <laughs> shot at Coop there. <laughs> <laughs> Look, and that's another reason why, from my perspective, Xavier needs this more because I'm an Ohio State football fan. So I'll the get last three here, years have not been good to me. Bengals, oh. and we're all Bengals. Well, the four of us, Kenny and Cap, don't care. But, you know, <laughs> losing to the Steelers, losing Joe Burrow, that's been tough. So I need this. I need it's, Xavier to win this game. Yeah. So Xavier, do it for me. If you're not going to do it for anybody, <laughs> do it for me. Yeah, you see it doesn't need it. You see it doesn't need it. Xavier needs it. Exactly. Hoops just in the, in, in the locker room pregame, just giving the speech. I'll give the speech. The next thing you know, the whole roster's in the transfer portal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one thing have, I wonder that because we have so many people coming in. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, I think so. Like, I give some, uh, like with the recruiting packages, they're yeah. sending videos and they've been having me do those. So yeah. I think that's well, they're doing Keep that with saying. Kenny now. <laughs> Kenny's like, one day, 14 years in the future, you could be on this crappy podcast with these clowns. So, right, <laughs> the cool recruiting pitch. Right. That's the, the yeah, Dion. that's the pipeline. Sends you yeah, to the exactly. robot. <laughs> Look at your long term. <laughs> You're not hey, thinking long term enough. I want to ask Kenny a question real quick. Kenny, um, other than the obvious, what kind of stands out to you most about like memories playing in the shootout or just being involved in some way, shape, or form? Like, is there anything that you think back on about just being part of that rivalry, other than the voicemails, other than the obvious, yeah. like I have, What's the obvious? I have uh, I have problems with my eye. <laughs> okay, that's something that I remember. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, no, but wait, is that like a, is that a lasting uh, issue? Like, did that cause uh, a lasting problem? Like, yeah, I have like because uh, my eye like filled up with blood, so I yeah. have like I don't know, my freaking retina or something has like little tiny holes in it in the back of my eye, so like the. I mean, oh, retinal foliage. Yeah, retinal foliage. Yeah, no, it's not a huge deal. I mean, it's something. It's something that like later in life will have to. They have to like do this thing with a laser to like. They called it welding, so they like put it to the back of your eye so it can't. Because it like when there's these little holes, little bits of liquid can get out and like sneak underneath your retina, and eventually, if you just let it go, it can you it can cause a detached retina. Um, but it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. I, so you I honestly, will never forget about this rivalry. Right. Well, yeah. the thing is, the thing is, I don't, I've had this conversation. I can't even tell you how many times, some of them in very heated conversations with, with idiots and some with people that actually want to hear about it. And I don't look back on that game with any type of ill will. To, I mean, I hate UC, right? I mean, but that's not the reason that I hate UC. You know, that's, it's just, that game was just a culmination of everything that's happened between. I mean, I've known Yancey since I was 12 years old. I've played against him in AAU tournaments. I mean, we're from an hour and a half from each other, you know, so it's like I've known him for a long time. We've gone at each other for a long time. It's always been a really fun time to play. And there's so much emotion and work and dedication that goes into being a college basketball player that sometimes those things bubble up to the top and they come out in that type of thing. So I've never, I've never been, I mean, outside of like the first couple of days after it happened, I've never really looked back on that with any type of anger. It was just, uh, it's just one of those things that everybody, we were all giving everything. And to a certain degree, you know, the fans and the community and the coaches and your teammates and stuff, they, they kind of push you to that because you're just like trained from the moment that you step on Xavier's campus that you hate everything you see. You don't even like the color red. Like that's just how it is. So, and when you push 18 to 22 year old kids in that way, eventually it's going to bubble over and something's going to happen. So, yeah. but, and I'm not, that's not a negative thing at all because I think that this rivalry is one of the most fun things in sports, definitely college basketball. So I, I want to see it keep going and, 
this is another problem with like what you guys are talking about um, for this game that's coming up. You guys have people that have played in this game. They they know that they're supposed to hate Xavier. They yeah. know that they're supposed to win this game. We have 10 new guys that have never played in a crosstown shootout before. How much does that affect the way that this game goes? Well, yeah, and that's actually one thing I wanted to ask you guys about too because I took a little bit of time um, last night to kind of like look at both rosters and just sort of, even if you just go by points, just down the list, the difference in those first five is completely different from Xavier. Like there's not one single name. And I was talking to Steve about this. I don't recognize like any of these guys at all for Xavier. And that's like the first time that I can ever remember that being a thing. There's always like one or two names that really stick out in your head, but this is the first time I don't recognize any of them at all. I, I ran into my man, uh, Gudis at the Chicago airport when he was flying home with me to Cincinnati from, uh, from Lithuania. Like I legit sent, uh, Andy a DM. I was like, is this your boy? He's like, yeah, that's him. So, <laughs> but, uh, Gidis? Oh, yeah, Gidis. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, a sort of new segment alert. Don't you mess that up again. <laughs> yeah, me, Chuck. I, I, want you, I want you to read every name on the um, roster and try to pronounce it. I know yeah. you guys got a Lazar oh, boy. or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> All right. The one that go. really threw me off was uh, I'll, I'll go, go for it. Oh, just oh wait! I gotta get the me. sorry. I gotta do the first no. names. I gotta pull up the ro- actual first name. I did the <laughs> well. The, the the thing that sucks though is that like Fremantle is out because he was the one guy I actually like. He's he's been there like for a longer time, and I'm sure he's still around the program, of course. But like that just sucks that he's not able to play because like that's that's the type of guy like like Justin was talking about that we know that we know to hate. Like uh, mm-hmm. I I jokingly put out a tweet about um. Like the first game of Xavier's season in like 2018 when Zach Hankins was on the team, like, and uh, I jokingly put out a tweet. I was like, "All right, found our new Xavier guy to hate," and like, I mean, he he lived up to it, you know, all, to his credit. And then we asked him questions, and uh, he he answered like that. It was so funny that we just ran into him on on campus that one day, like that just just perfect <laughs> meme making hey, opportunity. Hey, Steve, <laughs> um, you mentioned Zach Fremantle. Did you know? That Zach Fremantle, he is a white guy that wears number 32 that was born on October 18th. And he's the second best white guy to ever wear number 32 that was born on October 18th. No way. <laughs> no way. That's crazy. Yeah, that's true. Small Were you guys world. born in the same hometown too, by chance? Is this like a <laughs> Ken Griffey Jr. Stan Musial no, type of no, thing? <laughs> I don't know where he was born, honestly. I haven't had much uh, interaction with Fremantle, honestly. Jersey somewhere. I mean, it's it's kind of okay because you'd probably lose a few brain cells if you talk to him. <laughs> I can't compare. I lose enough brain cells have. every year when we do this. Yeah, <laughs> That's our job. Yeah. I have like, people don't call like talk to us to get to get smarter. Like it's yeah. just a fact. <laughs> well, it's let's not. get smarter right here. Justin is about to try to pronounce the Xavier name. So, all right. Oh. Bear with me. Okay. I'm going to start off with an easy one. Brad Colbert. (laughs) Nailed it. It's actually Colbert. (laughs) Uh, Desmond Claude. That's good. Okay. Uh, Sasa Siani. No. Chiani. No. Sasha. It's Sasha. Sasha. S-A-S-A. The the accent mark. (laughs) Where's the H? S. The <laughs> accent mark on the S makes an H sound. The There's H is no invisible. Accent mark. Well, what there's... website are you on? ESPN. Yeah, they don't. Have, they don't know how. Uh, to but yeah, it's. No, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to go to gozaver.com. Yeah. No. <laughs> can't do it. <laughs> can't do it. You can't make himself go to gozaver.com. All right, we got some other ones. Uh, yeah. Trey Green. That seems pretty easy. No. Jerome Hunter. It's there's crazy. a name I actually recognize. I recognize yeah. the name. Shout out. Uh, Jerome, Jerome Hunter, Hunter fan, fan club. club. Recognize that one. <laughs> Been in our mentions a bunch of times. <laughs> uh, Dalen Swain. Yeah, you got that okay. one. Uh, Quincy Olivari. Uh, that, that's one of the pronunciations. Uh, yeah. but, uh, I'm getting an ad for BJ's. Yeah. I can't get it off my screen. <laughs> whoa, getting, like, whoa, whoa! You can't get BJ's off your screen, dude. We're working here. <laughs> Come on, now's Justin. not the time. What website? Uh, Reed du- <laughs> Ducharme. Ooh, cap. How do you say it? Ducharme. Ducharme. Is it? Yeah. Oh, wait. There's, sorry. There's an actual, like, a, 
Oh, there's little ears next to yes. it. Yeah, don't. That's cheating. I'm not going to yeah, check yeah, it. I won't check it. I won't check it. You see fans uh, cheat. All right. Cam Craft, easy. Uh, oh, God. Uh, mm. <laughs> Kashi Nze? <laughs> Kashi Nze. Nze. So it is Kashi. Okay. Kashi like Nze. Cereal. Yeah. Uh, oh. Come on, you can get this. I want to say it's Lazar, but I think it's Laser. Laser Djokovic. <laughs> laser Schooler, I'll give you that. Is it Lazar? <laughs> it's Lazar. Lazar, okay. Laser, but I do, I, I'm a fan a, of Laser. Laser will be a thing at some point. Yeah. Avion McKnight. Welcome to the Laser Show. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so now that we're on the website, I see the little chink. Uh, the accent. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> now that you're on the BJ website, you see a little. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so that's for uh. C- Wait, I already forgot it. Siani, Shian, Chani, Chani, Sasha okay. Chani. God, a lot of a lot of, invis- a lot of invisible H's in that name. <laughs> yeah. Ab- Abu Asmane. Mm. <laughs> man, so man, you started off hot bad. with Trey Green. <laughs> so I, I've been told Abu pronounces his name wrong. Actually. So yeah. it's a boot. What last name does he? How how's he pronounce it? Usman. I th- Usman? I heard Usman on the broadcast last night, but, but I mean like that broadcast actual, was suspect though. <laughs> like pronunciation, according to my buddy Ahmad, shout out Ahmad, would be Abu Osman. That's the most. Yeah, Abu Osman. Somebody Michael should let him Wolf. know. <laughs> <laughs> Someone should tell him. You, you say uh, your name wrong. <laughs> Ian Ian Sab Sabrin. Yeah. That's We're getting into the walk-ons okay. now. Hails from Zach Hamilton, Fremantle, Ohio. Bob Nunji. There's still a Nunji on this roster. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 yeah, he's hurt right now. Okay. We're fine. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> Willis Willis Reed walking out of the tunnel and he's just gonna come out and drop 24 on us somehow. <laughs> okay, last one. Uh this is uh not not Gaitis. Jitis. <laughs> Jitis. Jitis. Do that last name. Nemec- Nemec- oh, Nemekisha. Ooh. Nemeksha. It's got the sh like the same thing with Sasha. Namiksha. Namiksha. Jitis Namiksha. So how, how many sh and sh, sh and chas did we have with no H's? I don't know, but all I, this is like the most Sean Miller recruited roster I think I've ever seen. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, the, a this is a, a very Sean Miller <laughs> <laughs> roster. Very European. <laughs> what do you guys think about the Alta Fiber commercial? I haven't <laughs> seen it yet. What? Uh, I mean, I'm, you, oh, see, I you don't support Wes Miller? I forget they're not local to Cincinnati. Oh, that's Nashville, right. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. we moved Nashville, away. Y'all Arizona. are still there. So Yeah, so I, um, guess, I guess Clifton's not that great of a place to live. They're moving across the country. <laughs> yeah, if you're living in Clifton after you graduate, uh, I don't know. The, y- you got your own issue. Like, there's nice parts of Clifton, but it's, like, way down the hill, even, like, past the skyline down there. So Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Ooh, that skyline is good, though. <laughs> Yeah. Go to Skyline. Yeah, I, I will give them that. Like it's open. Yeah. It's the best Skyline I've ever been to. Justin and I we were go, just there. Like, yeah, it's like you go after a lot of games. Simpsons. It's like the one open late, and it yeah. I feel so weird being in Xavier Gear in there. It's, it's <laughs> rough. Well, the thing is, there is that they like the servers there. They literally do not care. They are trying to get you out in like five minutes. And like, <laughs> all right, come on, keep it rolling. Dude, there are cool. machines in there, dude. I've never seen anyone ring someone up quicker than in that skyline. It's insane. Oh yeah, oh boop, yeah, boop. yeah. I, I, he's a, he's an artist, man. I, I just watched him do it, and like, yeah, yeah, he, man, he ain't. In- insane. So yeah. shouts to them on your, on your skyline. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, is there? Let me let me turn around and ask you this because I'm sure you guys don't have an ESPN Plus membership. You're not I watching do. our I do game. Have one. Okay. Well, Coop. Uh, I like watching Ryan, KU. Is there a Ryan Day documentary you're going to watch on ESPN Plus? <laughs> no, but there's about to be one soon. <laughs> <laughs> Fumbling the bag from third base. Um, so <laughs> what questions do you guys have for UC that we can answer for you? Oh, yeah, I guess this is a good time to start like getting into the game. Uh, that we're all like previewing. We don't here. have Although, to. We can just yeah. do, oh, no. do a whole like hour and a half. And not <laughs> I'm talk, not used to talking about, about basketball on a podcast. I thought that'd be kind of funny. <laughs> Let's talk about basketball. Yeah, no, that, that's <laughs> that's funny. Like, I don't know anything about it. Like, Kenny's probably the only one here who knows actually actually knows ball. So, 
A little bit. I know a little bit about it. <laughs> I guess just for you see what's standing out the most. Obviously, you guys have had a pretty good start to the season. What's been like what's been the team's identity so far? Obviously, absolutely stacked schedule so far. So <laughs> you can really tell a lot about them. Yeah. Yeah. Really that's making thing... people quiver. Yeah. Yeah. So like what we've been doing a lot better this year and obviously uh getting uh Aziz Bandago back a couple of games ago when we uh uh put the suit on the NCAA and they, they folded like real, <laughs> real easy after that. Um, he makes our rim protection a lot better. And uh, just, uh, just from talking to different people, like they, they're wondering if like the, the bigs are going to be a problem for Xavier against UC, because, you know, we don't have Jamil Reynolds still, he's still on his uh, NCAA waiver, but um, Bandago lock in uh, Oguama. Those are three, at least like, I, I don't know if you want to say like great bigs, but they're like they're at least solid for sure. And they've been able to play well enough. Um, I the Howard game was just a weird game just because like Howard was leaving a lot of space, but they wanted to get out and run. And I know that's what Xavier is about. Like they're one of the higher paced teams on Kempom. And so that worries me a little bit. The other thing that worries me a little bit too is that like you know, the home whistle gets rolling at Xavier like it did last night. And then there's like <laughs> 20 to eight fouls in the second half. And somehow you guys have a lead on Houston with like six minutes left. And I'm like, how did this happen? Because I was, I, I watched until they, Houston made like that 12 0 run. I was like, all right, I'm turning on the, uh, the Pac 12 game. And like, I just kept checking up with the score and, I, I was pretty impressed with like Xavier being able to shoot like four of 18 and still only uh, from three and still only lose by like five, you know, that's called so, playing Houston. I mean, that will not carry over to this <laughs> game because as we know, it is Xavier's birthright to hit like nine threes in the first half of this game every year. So it's going to be a lot of people happy about some chicken nuggets. If that's the case, <laughs> <laughs> I hope so, man. Well, yeah. I think Xavier does this thing where if they hit 10 threes in a game, then the following day, Oh no, Kenny! The game's on a Saturday. Saturday. Oh, Dang. this is bullshit. Um, Chick Fil A. Get a free yeah. eight yeah. nugget if Xavier hits ten threes. They've not come close yet. Chick Fil A is but... trying to pull oh. the wool over over all of us here. <laughs> uh, they don't think that we see it, but we see it. We see it. We know <laughs> they, what's up. They see it. Yeah, they um, saw a bad Trey three Green. point shooting team, and they only did Saturday games. They know what they're doing. <laughs> but Trey Green hopefully is healthy by then. He missed the Houston game. Um, so I think flu or stomach virus or something, but Trey Green's a freshman and he, I think is our best three point shooter coming off the bench could be a microwave. The one, yeah. one thing you were talking about with the fouls for the, the Xavier Houston game, there was, I think it was 50 fouls called in the game. It was 27, 23, which is absurd. I mean, we're, we're used to a boo getting, you know, four and a half fouls a game. But other than that, I mean, it was, Towards the end of the game, there was definitely some calls in Xavier's favor, and we were talking about it on the pot or on the stream. Like, uh, no way to hide behind hide from that. But there was a point in that game where the refs decided that they were just going to call everything. Like from probably, I want to say twelve minutes and twelve minutes to the end of the game, they started calling everything. I mean, there was probably five moving screens. There was over the back calls. They, I mean, it was they were calling literally everything. And in the beginning of the game, they were just calling everything on Houston. So it was like, yeah, you know, it, there was def there. I don't think that anybody's saying that the refs didn't help us out last night. That's for sure. But Blah, boys. Houston didn't play a great the game. Boys. How many minutes does a boo get in this shootout game? Like more or less than twelve and a half without fouling out. Okay. Um. Actually, that's a good, that's a good prop bet. Um. <laughs> we have this the guy Blob King Sportsbook. <laughs> We have a guy who's the biggest hack of all time, dude. Like, he's getting a foul, like, every four minutes easily. Yeah. Yeah, I that watched was, him. Uh, he fouled, out of, he fouled out of two – was it three games in a row? He fouled out well, – no, he <laughs> fouled out of two and got kicked out of one. Oh. That's, that's, that's right. right. The, one game he he didn't, uh, he, the, the one game he didn't foul out of, he headbutted someone. Yeah. So he knows his job. That's his job. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hack. Those, those are the guys you need out with, like, all the energy. I can see him hacking, like, yeah. fouled out in ten minutes. <laughs> Well, one thing I wanted to uh, bring up, because, you know, when we're kind of thinking about how this game's going to go, there's a lot of like the changeover and names and like some of the, you know, turnover on that uh, starting five or at least contribution. I'm still not exactly sure what your starting five is per basis. I don't think we are either. But 
Okay, yeah. fair enough. But I did what notice that. So for Xavier, you guys have two guys that are uh, over ten points a game. So you got two double digit scores. And for the Bearcats right now, we have five double digit scores. And so this is one of the biggest things that I think like really helps Cincinnati in their favor this year is something that like, I feel like Xavier's done fairly well over the past handful of years is had a team that like everybody can shoot. Everybody can kind of do a little bit of everything. And you have like high point contributions all over the board. Cincinnati has really lacked that because it's all been over the past few years, David Julius, Landers Nolly, you know, some of those bigger names that, if they're not scoring, that game's not going to be won. Like, it doesn't matter if you're playing Xavier. It doesn't matter if you're playing Houston. It doesn't matter if you're playing USF. Like, those games all relied on those guys. And so I think for now, this is one of the things that I'm actually really excited about is having a lot of guys who can score and a lot of guys who can all kind of do it all. Uh, because, again, this could be anybody's game. This happens every year. You have somebody who just, like, absolutely dumps a load of points on this game that you're just not even expecting. And so I'm really curious, like, what do you, who do you think that would be this year for Xavier? And then I guess we'll try to figure out who that would be for Cincinnati. I think, I think the guy, I'll talk, go ahead and Kenny. I was just going to say, I think that you're going to see Xavier's going to kind of this, this UC game. I think you're going to see um, if Olivari is able to, if Olivari and Trey green are able to shoot the ball, then Xavier will have a good chance to win the game. If Xavier goes four for 22 from three, they're not winning the game. I don't care if they only make four threes, but if they're going to shoot 22 of them, they got to make more than four of them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and so we have, and this is something that I brought up is I don't think that Xavier has a point guard. Like we have, I mean, Trey green is probably, probably our most stereotypical quote unquote point guard, but he's also our best shooter probably either between him and Olivari, but he's also a freshman that I've never, I've not really seen really how he can bring the ball up against pressure. Des Claude brings the ball up a lot. He's been having some problems with turnovers. Um, I think a lot of that comes from being thrown into this, you know, superstar role for a team that doesn't, that's really, you know, kind of lacking that superstar. He's been thrown into that, you know, ultimate green light where he has to go out and score 20 points a game. And I don't know necessarily mentally if he's ready for that. I think his athletically and his skill, I think he can do it, but right. it's just, that's the biggest thing for Xavier right now is finding their identity, finding what their roles are on the team. Because right now you can see it when you watch them play offense, they're stuck in a position where they're driving to places where they can't do anything with the ball. And everybody else just is kind of looking at them. Like, what are you going to do? And there's just no real – I don't see a lot of cohesion outside of when Xavier's able to use their defense to score. Do you think it's a lot of freewheeling kind of offense? Is that like a Sean Miller type thing or – No, well, I, I mean, that's something that he talked about in his, you know, sabbatical. He <laughs> was watching uh, watching a bunch of other coaches and teams, and he kind of saw this, like, freewheeling offense where there's – it's like organized chaos where you kind of have dribble, dribble weaves, some random ball screens, things, you know, high, low passes, all that kind of stuff. But it really, it's really crucial that you have a bunch of guys that are able to make the plays that they need to make. And when you have, you saw it a lot, you saw, it, it was very magnified yesterday against Houston because Houston has kind of this, this helter skelter defense where they're throwing one and a half guys at every ball. And if you're able to find those passes and make shots, Houston's a very beautiful team. So I think that you saw it last night in that Xavier doesn't really have a lot of guys that can make those plays. There was, a, I mean, four or five just really bad turnovers. And then you have four, you know, three or four moving screens that don't necessarily count as turnovers, but, you know, they are. And plus it's a foul. <laughs> so it's just – it's it was tough watching last night because you can see – that they're doing what Miller wants them to do, but they can't necessarily make that play that finishes it off. Execution. I'm a right. big fan of execution. <laughs> I want all my guys to be executed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'd say just real quick, our guy would probably be uh, Dan Skillings. Uh, he's a, he's only a sophomore, but um, he's had some Tony Snell games this year, but he's also had some games where he goes for like 25 and five. Like he's been like, he has some really boomer bust potential and, uh, 
you know, we just like like we said, we don't really have we have like more of an offense this year. Um, I guess like the stereotypical, the guy that I said would be like, you know, the hometown kid, the senior who comes out and just hits five threes. We have a guy like that. His name is CJ Frederick. I don't know if you'll, you'll know about him, but um, Familiar, like, yeah. he, he, he went over against Howard. Uh, that wasn't great, but I do think that uh, him and uh, skillings could, could do something. Um, I'm also kind of wondering if uh, Seamus Lacocious, like, I don't know how much he played against you guys when he was at Butler, but just wondering if he has a little bit more familiarity with how to play against this savior team. And maybe if, if to... the rumor's true, he's going to have a lot of familiarity with savior because some Xavier fan drove around campus and donked him with their car. I want to know who hit him. Like what's going on. Was that a hit and run? Do we have an answer of like, did they actually get the person that hit him? Andy, do you know where your car is? What happened? Well, so Seamus was hit by a car, like literally yesterday on campus what yes and like he walked away thankfully thankfully with like very minor you know just like a bruise on his leg more than anything but there are way too many people on that campus that get hit by cars like it, and that's not like as much as i know that we all like to joke in here like that is not fucking funny like no. this shit is so it, it's so common and i don't know why this is continuing to be an issue but they just don't fix it yeah, yeah, I think I really are you just joking when you're saying that you that it was like yeah, I, I'm not we, you're... we're joking. Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. just because that's me, that's fucking messed up. No, no, no. We're joking. No, no. He actually that... did get hit by a car. I'm just wondering like No, he did. He legit no, did. I believe yeah. Like uh, I think he was just trying to get the free it? tuition. They don't know who did it? No, no I, I don't know. We we don't we really have any anything else about it yet. because if it was like a smart car or a fiat, like that car is probably totaled. Right. <laughs> I, I did hear that the car received more damage than Simus. I think that just goes towards how like low key big Simus is. Yeah. <laughs> like, because he's actually a very strong dude. Uh, yeah. um, the fact that he was yeah. able to walk away from that unscathed is actually, yeah, kind of, yeah. I, I consider it a kind of a miracle. It's, it's one of those things where, like, you know, again, I don't, I just don't understand how this happens so much on this campus because you hear about it literally like twice a semester that somebody gets hit. And I'm hoping that, like, at least this will be the wake-up call. That, like, yeah, oh, you hit a basketball some player or something, so people can actually figure out who did it. I'm, yeah, yeah. put them in golf carts and drive them to class. Yeah, That's messed yeah, up. yeah. I don't want to say anything, but there was a uh, NBA player where there was no cameras involved. Like, there was just a ring doorbell. So I'm, ho- I'm like, it's just weird, you know. Like, it, it was just weird to see West Miller come out and say that. It was like, yeah, hit by a car. What do you mean? Like, yeah. Uh, that that's just just weird. I agree though. Like they so the j- what I'm thinking happened, Justin, and uh, like you local guys would know this. So you know where um it's not Jefferson, but um what's Justin? What's the other street? Like oh I, I'm sounding Calhoun right now. I don't know. No, not Calhoun. Like if you're MLK. coming, like, no, no, no. Where no, it is Jefferson. I'm sorry, because like Jefferson goes down the street by like Daniel's Hall and everything. Yeah. So right. all the players they live like by Short Vine and all like there's like an apartment building like back there where like a lot of the athletes live. And so there's like this one crosswalk that they just probably got to put like a like a flashing like pedestrian. They need to put there. a bridge over it. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. Like, no, I mean like there's just that's exactly where it happens because people just keep speeding up and down that street right there. So it doesn't seem uh, like it would be that difficult to just throw a walking bridge. Right. Well, you're talking about UC here. here. So, you know, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> come on now, you know. We'll like, spend $300 million on this facility, but we can't put in a bridge to protect our students. No, no. Yeah, come on no. Now. that's too easy. Hey, I've been told Xavier doesn't have trash cans in the classrooms right now. What? <laughs> that's what form. I've been told. What, but, what, you know what what's the context? Do? They're cutting costs for the, for the medical school. <laughs> yeah, they got to get rid of the trash. <laughs> but they made the, brand- the- they laid brand new mulch yesterday. It's this. It was December Wait. first. <laughs> Wait, they, they laid brand new there. mulch. Brand that, new that mulch would be is, for a tree, would it? Dude, those trees look <laughs> pretty new. I'm thinking Davion McKnight was responsible for one of them. That's how new. It was. <laughs> whoa, 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 wait. Let's go, let's go back to this for a second. So, I, I have to know: is the tree thing legit? Like, is this actually a thing? Yeah, I, it's legit. They are cut, they are planting ten trees for every three made. Yeah. Okay, is I, this happening like on campus or is this like somewhere that's else? That's what pisses me off because we can't we don't get know. The answers. We can't get the <laughs> answers because they say, "Hey, 
guess what? We made seven threes tonight. We're planting 70 trees. Where are they? Because there's only so much <laughs> Where room. Are the trees? And I don't want Xavier to be hitting threes and them being like, oh, yeah, well, we're planting these trees in uh, Georgia or something like that. <laughs> like, they should Is be Xavier, low- are you... Are we are we about to accuse Xavier of greenwashing? What if whatever <laughs> no. you want? I call it yeah. treason. I, th- I call. I it think treason. they might be. I think they're planning him in the metaverse. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm cutting them down. That's why I got this <laughs> right here. So I've been cutting them down. Um, I can't flip the camera on my la- laptop, but I have woods in my. I had. I can see the reflection in your glasses. Yeah. I had woods in my backyard. There you go. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. It used to be all woods. Now it's yeah, just cut those trees down. a small collection of trees. <laughs> we just yeah. don't need that many trees. I'm tired of raking leaves. <laughs> we don't need drop some more bars need oxygen. While it, please. We don't need any of that shit. Get out, get out of here. <laughs> oxygen is just a placebo effect. <laughs> That's what we're we gonna do be this living like podcast. We solve the issues the university won't. I want to see you guys with some bricks and some freaking cement and go build a bridge. Hey, the amount of bricks we've hit at the Cintas Center over the years, like I think we, yeah. I, I, I think we're good. But for every I mean, time a a bucket, uh, every time a ball just rims right out, that's when we're gonna. We might have a solution bricks. here. All these trees that Coop's cutting down, right? We use that to build. I a bridge. like that. There we go. There we go. I mean, that's. that's- now so that's some community. Up. Yeah, right, right there. Yeah. Bring them together. Right. Unity. <laughs> I don't want to bring up bad memories for you guys, but uh, this summer there was a Cincinnati-based team that actually did go in and beat a Xavier team at the Cintas Center. And um, none of them and, knew what that felt like before. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> and uh, they, we had a, a spaces that night in the middle of what, what like July, and like there was actual people on there. Um, y'all decided to not show up. I don't know what happened there. Maybe like misconnection or something. Yeah, the, but... uh, the CentOS Center Wi-Fi was down. Oh, you know, yeah. You know, yeah, well, yeah. up yeah. in the second I was a, bowl, too. I, was a, I think I was a Danis. <laughs> <laughs> so, I yeah, know, I, I may have been speak. extremely blacked out. <laughs> well, we walked you know, into the old... Danis before that game. And like we walked into Danis before the game. And within like five minutes, there was a a TV crew there when we were doing it, I was doing an interview with, with a TV crew about that game in Danis. It was hysterical. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I like, I just love how many people actually watch that game. Like I would love to see the ratings for that game. Cause I'm sure no one was tuning into the reds that night. Like it was like <laughs> summer cross town. Sh- like that's what TVT wants, but that was awesome. But I'm just curious, like last time a team wearing red and black wearing the natty, Went into that that arena. They won. Is there is that, that make you guys any more nervous at all? Wearing for, the blocks for next weekend. I'm just. I think I think our team does enough to make me nervous. I don't need the. <laughs> <laughs> we block out the outside noise. Yeah, our team right. makes us that, that nervous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you but that game. Did you guys watch? Did you go to the game? I wa- I watched the game. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, it was, yeah, it was a lot. That was that environment was a lot of fun because the people that were in the arena. Um, I mean, it was, it was heated. No question yeah. about it. Like they wouldn't even, so the game before that, that we played me too. And CJ sat on the floor and we were just watching the game. And there's a couple of shots of two, like running out on the court after we made shots and stuff. It was pretty funny, but um, they wouldn't even let us down there. They, <laughs> like we were not allowed. We weren't even allowed in the lower bowl we, they made us stay. We were up in the Joseph lounge and we had to stay there. We weren't allowed to be down there. They were, they were on uh damage control for sure. So you know what it's like to be Andy at that event. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Banned from the lower bowl. <laughs> yeah. I want to tell a story real quick. So at that TBT game, Andy and I, man, we had such a good plan too. And it oh, never yeah. worked out because we lost. But um, I wore all black for the funeral. And reason being, the TBT name is Zip Em Up, right? Body bags. So Andy purchased a body bag. And we had it in CentOS. And we, we don't know how it got in the CentOS. <laughs> Not a clue. Hey, we just kind of found one laying around. And, uh, we and it was dated. Weird. We told the TV crews, like, hey, you know, if Xavier, if Zip them Up wins, put the camera right here. And we're like, okay, bet. And uh, had this fucking body bag. I bought a, ooh, I don't want to, using someone else's money, I bought a UC. A hoodie from TJ Maxx for like six bucks. 
Uh, it was highly discounted. It said like 14th place in the Big 12 football, <laughs> whatever. Um, and Andy was going to put it on, and we were going to zip him up in the body bag and everything. It just it didn't work out. See, honestly, I'm so glad that you told told us that story because that makes me feel even better about winning that game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you went to all of these lengths to plan that out. Like yeah. this is it, the actual game is so far removed from us winning. It, it, we just don't even know the feeling anymore. But that makes me feel better. And, <laughs> Definitely makes me feel better. Thank you, Coop. And, I, that's honestly what I was. I, I really wasn't mad about the loss. It was just fun to have shootout, like a shootout in the in the summer. Then I thought I can't do this. Yeah, I, 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 I can't get into a body bag and zip get, zip myself. It's up. like the potential Fuck. of the moment. Like you know how like viral that thing could go you know how great that moment could be and it just gets ripped out yeah. from under you that's even better i, had, I mean we had this fucking when, great idea and we, and we found out a way to make it work yeah. when like you're disappointed like if someone told you when you wake up in the morning it's like hey you're not going to be in a body bag tonight you're probably pretty excited and the fact <laughs> that you go to sleep like man i should have been in a body bag tonight i mean that's how much that rivalry means <laughs> You would have gotten a bunch of pictures out at Dana's, like people just like got to uh, take a picture with it. So, but I would have liked to see a picture of Andy in a in a UC hoodie. Like that would have that would have made me laugh. That would have been actually kind of scary. I was just like all day. I was walking with a spring in my step because I'm like, man, I'm going to zip Andy <laughs> in a body bag. <laughs> He's going to zip Andy up. <laughs> I'm going to zip Andy up. I had, we, we got it we had it all painted and we um uh, like and we knew exactly where it was like if if, if we hit that uh, if we hit one of those elam enders i was going right for it i knew exactly where to go and we were going to be ready and uh, I, I i could just feel the viralness coming about and then all of a sudden uh and like and we were we made a run like we made a run to um kind of get cut within one and then fucking jacob evans uh decided you know what I'm, I'm gonna hit a, I'm gonna hit a three with the hand on my fucking face. I because when when the shot went up, I'm like, hell yeah, good shot. That's a great shot to cause. <laughs> and then like great great defense. Right? That's the shot we want. And then I'm like midway through the shot, I'm like, fuck, that's going in. Yeah. <laughs> the I wonder range how much of emotions. Kind of, I wonder how much that kind of stuff happens because uh, you know obviously every team every school has a rivalry and um I wonder how much there's these like big moments that never got to be because the team lost. Yeah, dude, I made like I I've been waiting on this. I last year when we played uh, UCF, like I made a few T-shirts and I was like, I'm gonna like give these away. I'm gonna sell. Like I made them with a cricket. Like I I made the graphic. I cut the shit out. I ironed it on. I had the whole thing ready to do that. Huh? (laughs) How the hell did you train a bug to do that? Like, (laughs) I put these crickets to work, man, and they did the whole that whole deal. Did you and then them? all of it went to waste. Huh? No, we, we support what well, co-ops are. That's that's no. unpaid okay. labor. You know, oh, that's, that's, that's what UC is all about. You know, co-op yeah. like un, unpaid, you know, I'm a yeah, big fan. Of, I'm what, a big fan of the cricket. My I mean, sister got into it and we've been making we've been making a bunch of stuff. It's a, it's really fun. It my, is. It is actually a great time. My it's fiance like, is making uh, uh, <laughs> she's making sweat uh, sweatpants for our, our wedding with uh, and she's she cricketed out all the names of the people in the bridal party and she's gonna put them on the butt for each one. On the butt, so, perfect. That's the, yeah. that's where you have to put them. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's if if like someone knows your name, then you're just like, oh, why are you staring at my ass? Yeah, yeah, dude. Like, come on, man. <laughs> how do you know my name? The only way to know my name is to look at my ass. I mean, my eyes are up here. <laughs> That's what Sean and uh, uh, Wes are going to be doing this week, you know, just staring at each other's asses again. It's like, that was nice last year. (laughs) Interesting. Uh, Speaking of things that never would have happened, Cap, Andy, could you imagine if we never could have got that Mick Cronin cameo? (laughs) Oh, man, that that would have been heartbreaking. And, like, the fact that I couldn't tell anybody how disappointed I was because no one else knew about it. Uh, but we, like, we like if, if we had year. lost that game, then I would have, like, I, I would have, I would have actually cried. <laughs> well, that that's like you putting like real, real money in there, like real stakes. Like how, like how much is he? What? How much was it? Like for the cameo, it was like a hundred bucks or grand? Damn. No, okay. I, mean, it, it, I think it. I think it was a. I didn't make the cameo. Marcus. Well, I mean, hey, he's got to pay for rent in L.A. somehow, you know. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I hope he's doing all right, you know. I haven't really kept oh, up with him much. 
That yeah, would be so funny. Like, how does Mick pay his rent? He just scams like <laughs> Xavier students. Well, I guess you guys aren't Xavier students either. I mean, uh, so like uh, he can't scam go. you. <laughs> That's not even a knock. Like, I'm actually kind of. It makes me feel better. This is the reason that we talk to these guys because they're not actually Xavier students. Yeah, yeah. I had a <laughs> yeah. I'm almost thirty. <laughs> so, Cap, you uh, you commented on this tweet a while back. I was like. I, I don't get why free real estate is a thing like still in 2023, just because like, I I don't know. I, I, we were just like, I think Justin made a joke and then I like a couple of Xavier fans responded to it. Um, and what's funny is like, I know one of the guys, cause he, I used to be the Barstool Viceroy for since he, he used to be the Barstool Viceroy for X back in like 2018. So like, it, it's just funny. Cause I knew who he was, but um, I was more like, like, can we just not talk shit and just like have fun without it being called like free real estate? Like that, like to me, rent that free. term is just so boring. Like yeah, just rent like, free is the dude. worst. Like that's the worst comeback. Like it, yeah. it, I have nothing else to say, yeah. but <laughs> I mean, like, it's the worst tweet that I see. Like whenever I see one, I'm like, this is not engaging at all. And I agree with you. Like, I think we should be able to chop it up and have fun with it. Um, Cause it is a big rap. And I think it's stupid to like, act like you don't care. Yeah, I, I never yeah. liked that. I never liked when Mick did that, like acting like we don't care about this game. It's not important to us. It's like, yes, the fuck it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, it's a, and it's important to us. I, mean, I think we'd be lying if we said, oh yeah, we don't care. Like, well, like acting like the big guy. It's like, come on, man. Like, we care. It's a big rivalry. Like, well, he doesn't he doesn't care about it. But the best thing about getting the UCLA job is he doesn't have to play at Cintas anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, hey, Big Ten. Well, no, I'm sorry. They ended the Gavit games. I was gonna say if the Big Ten and Big East thing, like they re-signed the contract and like Mick oh, had yeah. to walk back into oh, that would so be insane. Wow. Wow. Yeah. No, no, you're he right though. He, he would he, have, he would come up with an illness or something. Yeah. <laughs> the Coach K back now. issue. Please. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's well, it like that, been, can I ask you guys what it's like seeing Mick out in UCLA and like how good he's done? Is it surprising to you at all? Or what's it like seeing how he's been? No. I feel like he's calmed down a lot. Yeah. I think that I think that Mick is at the core. Like I think he's a very good coach. I think aside from his like court antics. He seems like fairly level headed all, you know, all things around when he's just not playing Xavier. I, I think that the yeah. biggest thing for Mick is his system was all there to work. It's just, he gave up on recruiting in Cincinnati. Like he, he just did not try hard enough to Cincinnati recruit really the big him. guys here. Yeah. He had yeah. the ability to get these players. And I think now that you put him in UCLA, you have, you have LA as a target. You have one of the w- most winning programs of all time in college basketball. And on top of that, you have NIL, like you can pay these players that well, combination. Like it's very hard to not succeed with those things, but I still think that he is doing a very the, good job. The other thing too, though, is that like, no, not like, you know, they got the Lakers, they got like, they got so much other stuff there that the people, amount of people that care about like UCLA basketball, like, I mean, obviously it's a bigger city, so it's like more, but I do feel like in, you know, the West coast, just because, I mean, I know it a little bit from Arizona, like people don't like, live and die all the time on like you know one game like i don't think people are really living and dying on the ucla usc basketball game because they got football right and then like he i think just being in that environment where obviously he's not like got the family thing like there's no one really around him that knows um cap you said he's gotten more calmer i'm kind of wondering if he uh took advantage of some of the legalities in uh (laughs) california once he moved out there you know i mean like he's not yelling at uh press conferences anymore but um it did hurt me a little bit if i'm being honest to see him go like immediately to the final four in 21 like that like i'm spiteful at heart and uh, that that hurt man like that i'm like (laughs) i don't know it just it just hurt all right damn it like look like (laughs) just seeing him like roll there i have a couple comments on this yeah I do feel like Mick was kind of owed, like he 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 was kind of due. You know what I mean? You see a lot of good teams that just didn't get there. And sometimes in the tournament, that's just the luck of the draw. You know what I mean? Sometimes you have a really good team that doesn't get there. Yeah. But I think one, I think getting out of Cincinnati was really, really good for him. I think maybe it was just too emotional being that close to home. And I think honestly, too, I think the narrative could be a lot different because when he went to the final four, they went in overtime in the first four against Michigan yeah. State. Like that game easily could have gone either way. And then what's the narrative right. if they lose that game? Like he he could have lost a job by now that's if they don't win if they don't win the final four that year. Yeah. So um, it, it's just it could have gone a much different direction, but it's been really interesting to watch. Yeah, but you're yeah. so right though about LA sports. They don't care like that about sports. No. I live in San Diego, and it's like if sports are bad, they just go on a hike in January. It's like <laughs> you know. yeah. 
Guess what I'm about to do after this podcast? If not, who cares? Guess what? I'm about to go on a hike after this podcast. <laughs> like that's like that is like some West Coast shit right there. And it's probably what 85 degrees. Uh, 66. But uh, oh, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. but it's nice. like, it would be, you know it it would be interesting to see if they put a... suck, It's freaking miserable because like the weather sucks. So if your sports <laughs> teams are bad, like I remember the Travis Steele era just being freaking miserable until like April. <laughs> it would be terrible. interesting to see if they put a if they were to ever put an NBA team in Cincinnati, what kind of support they would get because Xavier basketball, UC basketball have just been ingrained for so long. It would be interesting to see. I mean, obviously, it's the NBA. They're going to get support. But I don't think that UC or Xavier would see a fall off in their fandom or attendance or anything like that if they were to just throw an NBA team in Cincinnati. I honestly think, too, if you had, like, game on the same night, I think you still probably – you see a noticeable rift in the people that are attending an NBA game versus attending a, you know, Xavier or Cincinnati right. game. I agree. And that's what I'm like. It's that's completely. I mean, and you're right, because they have the Lakers, the Clippers, they have the I mean, there's so much going on out there. And plus, it's just an enormous city where people like you can have UCLA fans that live two hours away, but they're still right. like in L.A. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's just, yeah. I mean, not everybody can take a helicopter to Staples Center. <laughs> right. You well, and then. Options. Yeah. And not everybody like can text like or hit a uh, tweet at the coach's brother who uh, posts his gambling picks uh, for the horse <laughs> races every day. Uh, to this and... day is still wild. No. Okay. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I got a story. I got a story. I got a story. So Mick Cronin's brother, he was my last basketball coach <laughs> straight up. Like he was my basketball coach when I was a kid. And I very specifically remember all the time, like, Oh my God, like this is Mick Cronin's brother. Like, this is crazy. Like this is, I felt like, I felt like I was an otherworldly connection to the Bearcats. And then it's just like, yeah, well, he's, he's not Mick. Did you ever talk about horse racing during practice? <laughs> he's on if, the if side, I just can... like, I got a, I got a five in. I got to get, come on, come on. If, um, if I could reach back into my brain and remember half of anything that Dan said when I was like, what, 10, 11, 12 years old, I, I would give it to you, but I can't. Wait, so he coached you, you when you like were 10 goofy... and... Like, did, huh? did you do like goofy horse nicknames? What? Well, <laughs> All your well, plays like Secretariat? Sea Biscuit. Sea yeah. Biscuit. Sea Biscuit. <laughs> Get over here. No, I honestly don't remember much from those days. I remember uh I remember smacking the pavement at the White Oak Athletic Association building. Oh, uh and that was about it. Oh, you got the Andy in you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Andy of uh the V Sports Boys. All right. Uh, when do you guys feel like you gained consciousness? <laughs> uh, I'd say probably like, I don't know. I, I feel like it was later. I feel like I gained consciousness around like when I was like seven, but like, you know, I Last that's year. like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I, I don't really remember much between like four and nine. Like, I feel like the first thing I really remember is like when I was like 10 and that's you because zero through three. <laughs> I don't really remember those days now, to be honest. Steve but didn't speak remember. until he was seven years old. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. My he first real memory, memory, though, is that like I was at a uh, a UC football game. I think it, like in like 2002, nobody in the stands, and it was like December. Uh, and I still think like, why was I there? Like, hey, we, but the more you know, back change, the more they stay the same. That's right, exactly. <laughs> and where was I last week at a UC football game in November with nobody there? So. <laughs> I think that's I would gain consciousness around question. four. Yeah. Yeah. Four? Yeah. I remember the layout of my parents' like condo. This was uh like probably like 2002 or so. And like I can remember every single thing about that. But then there is a large gap to like yeah. probably the age of like eight or nine. And then there's probably even larger gaps until like well, maybe yeah, middle school. I, I the one of my one of my first memories actually was there was a kid in preschool that used to like, he used to pick on me all the time. Right. Because I was just like this big dorky kid. And I, he was messing with me the one day and I don't remember, I don't remember like the being picked on, but I remember the one day I just grabbed his, I was way bigger than everybody. Obviously yeah. I grabbed his hand and I started spinning him in a circle <laughs> and somebody opened a, like a swinging door and he smacked right into the door <laughs> And I was probably like, I was probably four years old 
and i have like a very vivid memory of that and then like my mom had to come pick me up from preschool because obviously i was in trouble but the i can remember the teacher telling her like this kid deserved it <laughs> because he was being he was just being a dick to everybody but, like that's my that's my very first memory is it's a core like, memory swinging a kid into a door that's awesome how tall were you in uh preschool like six three i don't know i really don't well at what point though i want to know like what was the first time that not like your family or anybody else what was the first time you heard somebody else say that guy should play basketball oh man really young yeah because i did i i mean i'm from maslin ohio man like this is this is the the football mecca of the world (laughs) maslin canton like they uh so i grew up i've been a vikings fan ever since i can remember i grew up being a vikings fan and um so that was just like always what i did with my dad watch football and so i always wanted to be a football player and Uh i actually they actually had to like I remember having the conversation with my mom when I was like eight or nine years old. She was like, just try it for one year. And if you don't like it, you don't have to play anymore. And I, you know, I tried it and it was just one of those things where, you know, you score 10 points, but you have 40 rebounds. (laughs) I'm just, I'm literally just shooting until I miss Um, or until I make it. I mean, but it's, you know, it was, uh, and then from that point it was like, okay, this could be something that I'm, you know, I obviously have a natural advantage. So, you know, I just kind of, and then at that point it was like no more baseball, no more football, just like basketball for, I don't really remember too much from the time I was probably eight years old until I was 18. I don't really remember anything other than basketball. Like it was just, mm-hmm. that's what I did. I lived, breathed everything. It was, you know, two, three workouts a day, eat, sleep, play video games. That was it. Mm. Well, so Kenny, you actually get to answer yes when people ask you, like, did you play basketball? Like, cause right, yeah. so I'm <laughs> I'm six six, and whenever yeah. any, anybody asks me that, I just have to say, no. Like, <laughs> that's one of the, that's one of the things that I am uh, most most happy that I don't have to to answer that question with no. The problem yeah. is now I I've retired and I put on like I don't know seventy pounds because I don't who hasn't anymore, and I just drink beer. But yeah, uh, the. Uh, now, every, now everybody asked me if I was a football player. Oh, oh, <laughs> anyway, damn. since he light. We didn't get to bring this up, and I do want to bring this up. What is it like? Is that Ryan to, yeah. Nice. There you go. What is it like to not have a Xavier beer? I mean, and if it's you pretty, do inform me. It's pretty liberating because then I don't have to force myself to drink a very mid beer. I can stick to beer that's actually good. And whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, probably so pretty good. <laughs> why do you think since he light is mid? I do. So that means that you drank Cincy Light. I did. I have drank Cincy Light. So that yes. means that you supported the Bearcats NIL fund. That's a by gotcha. drinking I did. a Cincy Light. Yeah, I did. I want to right. try How many it. gallons of the freaking greatest flavor did you order? That's my next <laughs> question. If you ate boldly Bearcat, so help me God. Uh, I'm so not. No, I, I'm a strictly a Musketeer Mint guy. <laughs> we'll put you in that body bag right now. Balls. <laughs> what? <laughs> Well, you you guys had a beer for a while, right? Or you still have one? Miller Lite. Well, yeah. <laughs> hey, we do too, you know. but cool. it's yeah. you know it's been replaced. It's the it's the battle for more Millers. Who's going to gobble more ass this year, guys? Got to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kenny, there, you missed this last year. That. Yeah, you probably <laughs> missed that. <laughs> uh, I don't. He's probably. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Kenny just left the chat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, that, no, what no, do you say? Like, that's we're, a, that's ready a good to gobble point, there behind. I think, I think that it's high time that somebody makes a Xavier beer. I think I might be able to make that happen. Well, hey, I, 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 know I, thought, I know a guy actually. I thought Will they beer? had one. I thought Sam Adams Will made beer? one. Did they? Yeah, I thought like because I've gotten re- replies in the past from Xavier fans on Twitter saying, "No, we have a beer already." So is it like a seasonal thing or? I, I don't know, but uh, well, they were selling it, it at Cintas. Yeah. I have so many ideas. We can call it, well, first of all, we can call it like the Musket Beer instead of yeah, Musket yeah. Beer. Easy. The Easy. Blob Boy Brew House. Yeah. Man, yeah, I like um, that. Triple Blob Brewed. I don't know. Like, oh, yeah. It <laughs> is something. When the Blob Athletics in partnership cold. with Samuel Adams, it's called D'Artagnan's Drought. Oh, That's yeah. Right. Yeah. I do remember hearing about that. That's right. Mm hmm. We Speaking of droughts, <laughs> God damn it! I knew that one was coming. 
<laughs> hey, I did you guys like that uh, line in the new Drake song? Uh, I can't remember the name of the song, but he says um, things get kinky after 15 years of dominance and is, I think, referencing that Xavier has won 11 of the last 15 shootouts. Uh, I don't that. I, I don't think he was referencing that, but I, I mean, what makes you say he wasn't? I mean, he is, the math he, works. Is, he is a big UC fan, so big I mean, maybe he's actually a Xavier guy, but he's using his own curse to curse the Bearcats by wearing UC gear. I think that's My what man. it is. That'd be an all time move. Yeah. I mean, I've honestly been praying that I see him show up in a Xavier jersey like now. Like before this game, please. He went to the dentist in a Memphis shirt, and I still use that. Like I still have that picture. <laughs> and then there's one of him like. How'd you get a, a picture of him at the dentist? Oh, someone tweeted it out. Like <laughs> Twitter, of course. I mean, uh, well, I got other ways. I mean, you, know. you may Steve have your own beer. We have our own app. Whoa! Yeah, you guys, you guys post app. on our app. Yeah, that's yeah. I'm yeah. See, that's the ultimate win. Like I actually, I meant to bring that up uh, because that's the one of the things that has been most infuriating like anytime like i go on anytime i, still I got the like, bird baby the app, i'm not updating to that stupid thing i still got the bird babe <laughs> that's how anytime you- that i do that like i'll i'll pull the app up and i'll like be sitting on the couch and my girlfriend will look at it she's like are you on the porn app it's like no it's x.com <laughs> no, <laughs> like, you're missing no, two I, x's it's just <laughs> something's really funny uh X just sent me something funny, and then she's like, "Excuse me," and then it's that <laughs> whole whole issue. That's what ended a relationship for me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, Coop. I was always hopping on my ex. Yeah, I got <laughs> you were stunting on your ex. Yeah, I was. Oh, it's yeah. not my fault. I, I'm I'm still in love with my ex. <laughs> okay, that's a little aggressive. Andy, we might be getting a little into the weeds here, buddy. <laughs> yeah. We just this see, is my therapy session. Come come run it in the door. Fuck you just say. <laughs> yeah. Explodes down the wall. Well, to Man, well, boys. This is making me angry. I'm I'm down a little bit of a rabbit hole here for D'Artagnan's drought, and you can't buy it. That's what? why we have to start our own. Right. There you go. Roll brew roll. I was going to say, we got to make it, we just got to go with straight up roll blob and we'll just make it seem like it's roll blob brew. Yeah. Just talk to Listerman and they, they got you covered, man. Like they'll, I, so speaking of Listerman, the guy that was on our stream last night, cat Pat Slagle, he is the guy that like, when I was in college, Listerman was really, really small. And he went in and like, he changed, he did a ton of marketing and all this different stuff for him and like help them become what they are today. I'm I'm gonna see. I'm gonna talk to him. I like it. Yeah. First oh, yeah. podcast with a beer in podcasting history. That would be <laughs> sick. That'd be pretty awesome. It'll have a six point nine ABV. <laughs> right. It has to. Or we can or we'll put, you know, Good somewhere between six point eight and seven point oh. I like in it. the middle there. Yeah. yeah, somewhere in the middle. And it's best served when it's freezing cold. Freezing, yeah. Oh God. <laughs> 30, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And so and then the way to tell it's cold is if the blob's blue. Exactly. See, I like, like that. I, I, I like that. I really like the idea of a beer, but I feel like you guys I like, like the idea of beer too. The blue I feel like the blue blob just in general, like feels like it has to be like a spiked, like slushy kind of thing. Mm. <laughs> I know I, it's I, not I, as like manly as a beer, but that feels like it's got like you got to have like a blue marg or something that's just like a hundred. You put moonshine in it. I don't disagree with you. This is the I'm experience of watching Xavier basketball. <laughs> <laughs> moonshine marks. <laughs> I got to roll off and take that hike, boys. But uh, go cats, beat Xavier. Good talking to you all again. See you next What'd year. You say? Your mic uh, good luck you in say? your bowl game, I guess. And- uh, I gotta go take a hike, and you know, uh, take, take a so hike. You're just take a hike. Are you just using slang? You're just, you're just bouncing on us. No, I'm literally taking a hike. So I, <laughs> I'm gonna like take that. a leak. <laughs> take a hike, yeah. <laughs> All right, boys. Talk to you later. Have a good hike. Wow. And then and I'm now surrounded. It's four on one. Am I am I in the center of all your guys' screens too? No, no. Oh, Coop's okay. in the center for me. 
Hell, a certain meme come to mind that I'm not going to say. <laughs> I I thought, I thought, that's exactly where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Kenny was the center. No, I think, Justin, I did want to say, though. You're going to put me on blocked. Is it just me, or how, how much has the cats, uh, Viva La Cats, grown the last little bit? It seems like you guys have grown a lot. Yeah, we've we've honestly had a, a decent amount of traction. I, I put a lot of focus like this past year on just trying to get um, like TikTok, Instagram, you know, uh, YouTube, especially like trying to push a lot of that other bit of media just so we can. How many TikTok yeah. followers you guys got? Like none, like 20. But it's getting the. We have it's getting the huh? me, me. <laughs> Could not be us. <laughs> what, did yeah. you, what did you say? Our Roblob <laughs> TikTok has like 5,200 followers. What are you serious? Those are really, yeah, yeah. that's insane. No, like, really ours is tiny. Story. Ours is tiny. Like we're we've done a lot, like to just try to like get the peripheral stuff. But like on Twitter, like we've definitely, I think we've probably Next. doubled in the past like year and a half. So. You have to call it by its name. What X? No, yeah, you have to sorry, it's name. Twitter. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, like if we if we get off of if we get off of the well, we're. We get off a lot in this, but if we get off okay. of this podcast, <laughs> we're getting to that. I would point. guarantee okay. that you guys are saying tweet, like guaranteed. You do not say <laughs> I'm going to post on X. You say I'm going to tweet. No, I call I'm it X-ing. retweet that. Z- I'm X-ing well, right of now. course, I was like making you say. It. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no, Justin. So, so Coop had a Twitter, I had a TikTok account, and he had a, a picture or a, a TikTok, excuse me, of Selena Gomez or whatever. And it went semi-viral. That TikTok account got 5,200 followers. And we changed the name of the account to Roblox. That's brilliant. That's so brilliant. <laughs> it has like hey, three not, videos. Not a lot Selena of carryover Gomez. between Selena Gomez and Xavier fans, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have that Venn diagram. Of the, yeah. 129,000 of the likes are the Selena Gomez TikTok. But that's not important. Yeah, that's that's completely irrelevant. All I was doing, I was in uh, L.A. a few years ago getting donuts by UCLA. I was going to go see Nick. And uh, I walk out of the donut shop, and there's this huge crowd. And I'm like, who's that in the uh, pink dress? And I'm like, wait, that's Selena Gomez. I'm like six feet from her, just recording her. So I'm putting on social distancing. (laughs) This was before COVID. Um, And then, um, yeah, she walks up. And uh, I, I like said crazy meeting Demi Lovato today, and then a bunch of like thirteen year old girls were like <laughs> throwing me in the comments, and now that's Roll Blob Pod. I was gonna say, so that's like <laughs> that's your TikTok fame is all around being destroyed by thirteen year old girls. Pause, Josh Giddy. Um, yeah, they're probably like eighteen now. Okay, <laughs> we were patient. <laughs> yeah. Oh but, yeah! I mean, obviously, as a why are we talking about this? Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing? As an NBA player, but you're right though. As an NBA player, it's like, why? What's the point? You Just have any smart. Instagram model you want, and yeah, all you got to do is make sure they're 18. Right. <laughs> Just doesn't. You have to go sense. take a hike. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He's gonna I'm, take a I'm hike. Uh, yeah, right. I'm gonna go take a hike in Norwood. Uh, <laughs> that's the place to disgusting. do it. It really is. All disgusting. right, boys. But do we have any parting thoughts about the shootout? About anything <laughs> else we want to get about the reason we're actually chest? here. Josh Giddy wants to get a girl off of his chest, I'm sure. But do we have anything we want to close with? Uh, Josh Giddy apparently is really good at closing. Do you? I, I'm. I gotta stop. I gotta stop. Do you? Uh, <laughs> Coop, do we have any? Did you get any mailbag questions for Viva La Cats? Ooh, you know what? Since we're down to one, Justin. Um, I'm just gonna freestyle some right here. Would you rather have fingers as your tongue or tongues as fingers? <laughs> Do they still taste? They still taste, yeah. Ooh. Ah, uh, see, that's different. Easy. Easy. I mean, I feel like you could probably put gloves on to like keep the taste out. So I don't I'd like the taste of gloves. The... Yeah. <laughs> <It's a taste laughs> I don't well, know if I be... could do fingers. There as would tongue. be a whole line of products. Yeah. <laughs> San, sans taste leather. <laughs> I, I yeah, that was I don't, a business idea. I don't know <laughs> if I could do. I think I'd have to do the 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 tongue hands. Tongue hands, yeah. Wife yeah. would be very very happy, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me think. What else we got here? Scoop uh, with the hard hitting question. <laughs> <laughs> this is <laughs> journalism. You made it sound like all right. I'm just gonna say this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, whenever I, I I just have to come up with something quick. Um. I'm really good at coming quick. Okay. 
I do want to ask a question. Can I ask a real question about the shootout? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the topic is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm allowed to ask questions not about Josh Giddy. Are we sure? Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. Where, and I don't know if sorry if you guys touched on this already, but um, where is like Wes Miller's hot seat gauge right now? I think there's a lot of high, and like I said, the hot seat gauge is at a. But let's just let's just say this: if this or is your baseline, all the, all the heat. Hot, sorry, is Satterfield taking all of the the heat away from him? Yes, Satterfield's doing a great job of <laughs> shifting the focus, but that seat is on fire. If this is your baseline, Wes Miller came in here. He moved himself up to about here. And then he's kind of just kind of done this. I think he stayed above the line. But I think the pressure is really on this year for him in non-conference. And I think that, again, this is what I go back to. I said earlier in the episode is like, this game means a lot for Wes Miller because it dictates how people perceive you from this point forward. Because it's... We started off 7 and 0, hopefully 8 and 0 when we played Florida Gulf Coast, and then we played Xavier. After we beat Xavier, we went through the rest of our non-conference, probably didn't have an issue, and we got our ass beat in the Big 12. Okay, expected, but you beat Xavier. You do all that, but you lose to Xavier, you go oh. through non-conference, you beat the cupcakes the way you're supposed to. He did everything he's supposed to except for win against Xavier. And then you got your ass beat in the big 12, hoping that that's not the case. I would really hope that that's not, but if that happens, that hot seat meter is going to start raising up a lot. And I don't necessarily think that like for me personally, I'm still all in on him because what I'm seeing now as a fan, like watching his team build through the past few years, like you're seeing all of his, the fruits of his labor come to fruition. Like everything is finally starting to click and mold. He's got his guys. All the pieces are there. The team is playing together really well. The the most together team in all of Cincinnati history. Shout out Matt Campbell. Uh, I, I think one of the things that I see though is like there's a lot of potential for this team moving forward. But if you lose to Xavier, a lot of people are going to be pretty pissed really fast because this is three straight with him. Five straight if you include the Brandon era. It's just I do. It's unexcusable. Well, and the other thing too is though, I I just wonder how <clears throat> how hot the seat can get with what I mean, when we had we were talking to Rick Browering and he was saying he was telling us about the buyout in his contract. And I mean, it's gonna cost them a lot of money to get rid of him in the next three years. So yep. how hot can the seat really get? Right. Well, I mean, and, you know, we're not we're not Texas AM. We don't have Jimbo Fisher buyout money. Right. Um, but but he you has know, Scott I, I Satterfield did... buyout money, at least his buyout from Louisville. <laughs> we got to figure out. We got to figure out how we're going to use that. Um, you know, I, I think this is one of those things. Like I said with Wes, I think there's a lot longer of a leash for him clearly than there is for Satterfield, and I think the biggest part of it at the core is the fact that he is a young guy who had a great track record at a smaller school. That's the Cincinnati mold. That is to a T the Cincinnati mold. All. Football players, or sorry, all football coaches, all basketball coaches in these prime programs have always been at a smaller Mac school or some random, you know, G5 school, and they've pulled them up, and now they're going to be on. <laughs> so just both just do this. <laughs> Anyways, uh, they're both going to be <laughs> random, you know, G5 school, and they come up to this, you know, higher level, and then they build that program and then they probably leave it off once they reach their height. That's the Cincinnati mold. Scott Satterfield is coming in at, you know, the bottom of the barrel and then continues to make it look even worse. That's tough. And then I think it's interesting too, because I've been talking to some UC fans. I know in real life. You're breaking up. Real like, I would give yeah. him time. I think <laughs> so internet. Well. Um, it's just interesting timing too. Cause I think, I think that you see, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're good. <laughs> I just um, want to let yeah, you know so you can that. say what you want to say and we can edit the rest out. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. But anyway, it's like I feel like with the Big 12, it's like I feel like the UC basketball program was like two or three years out from being ready to make this jump. So it's like I hope that they're, you know, from that perspective, you would want that leash. But uh, it's going to be tough. It's interesting timing for sure. Yeah. Like I said, I, I mean, I think there's enough of a leash there that people are fine with the Big 12, but you got to take care of your non-conference. It's not a hard non-conference. It's Xavier. That's it. Xavier Dayton. That's it. 
that sounds and rough. Honestly, I think the whole Satterfield thing was like happened at the best time for Wes Miller because now after that football season, people are so excited about beating two ranked two hundred ten palm teams. Like <laughs> people have never been so excited when your toughest team is a hundred ranked one hundred thirty second. It's sad but true, but. As it goes, you know, this is one of those things that you just got to take that momentum. And you got to do something with it. If you fall flat against Xavier at Cintas, you're just doing more of the same. And then I think people start to get uh, antsy and angry very fast. I've seen it happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big one. Like, it's a big one. Anything else, fellas? I think I'm good. good. I think I, I, think, I, we, I think we, I mean, we covered, <laughs> I think everything. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I have I'm, one I'm more thing. Just, I'm trying to bring. I'm trying to you know just think of some <laughs> stuff that we can talk about. I think we got everything. <laughs> we've we've gone over on uh, the time for sure that I think we were expecting. But Justin, <laughs> I have one last question. I've been trying to remember to ask everyone we have on the podcast this: If you had the attention of the entire world for thirty seconds and you can tell them anything, what would it be? Everyone in the world. Ooh. Timer starts now. Oh shit. Um I don't know. What's this if stuff? Koopy has the attention of the world right now. <laughs> Go bear cats. Uh cats that's by it. ninety. That's it. All right, that's, that's it. it. Ten that's seconds it. <laughs> the hatred. Be nice to people. You lost the world. You lost the entire world. You, what congratulations? You don't always take yourself so seriously. <laughs> there you go. All right, that's podcast bio, is done. Here comes the the hatred. Bye. <laughs> that's how it's that's a wrap. <laughs>